Oh, man. It's the grab bag. Hollywood has had its worst year possibly ever in terms of box office. Um, at least in several decades, but probably ever. And the reason for that is because of all of the massive bombs that have come out this year. Let's start off going back in time. We have uh, Thor Love and Thunder not breaking even. We have the Guardians of the Galaxy barely making any money. We have the Little Mermaid not making any money. We have so many. Uh, well, Flash was a giant bomb. The Marvels is a giant bomb. Aquaman is a bomb. Yes, there have been several movies that have actually made money, but when you compare that, you know, certain oh, and Wish didn't make money. Uh, so let's let's just point out Mario. That was a great success. The movie was around a hundred million dollars and. It made like 1.1 billion, somewhere around that range. Um, and all it needed to break even was approximately 300 million, give or take. So it completely crushed it. Uh, Paramount is pretty happy, I think, with that. Was it Paramount? No, wait, that was Universal. Universal put that movie out. Um, then you had uh, Barbie, which is the only reason Warner Bros. is not in as bad of shape as they could have been is because at least they had one movie this year that was very profitable. Uh, I don't even know what that one ended off. I know that one broke a billion dollars. And I don't remember if Oppenheimer broke a million, and not a million, a billion, um, or if it got really close to a billion. But considering that its budget was... I think $100 million as well, just like Mario. It only needed to make a certain amount to break even, and it blew right past it. The only problem is when you look at these movies that did do good, and then you compare it to all the movies that completely flopped, and then you have a bunch of other films. I mean, uh, Flowers of the Killer Moon was okay, but it didn't really have a gigantic box office, but... A lot of Martin Scorsese films don't usually like have that big of a you know, intro. They usually do very well on sales. Uh, with The Little Mermaid, um, they, I believe, ended around 550 But according to the estimates, they needed about 700 to break even. Um, they could have made that up in sales, but with the box office, that one hurt Disney. I mean, Disney is the one that is in the worst shape. With the number of bombs that have come out this year, um, and whatever you want to say about reasoning behind it, mostly I think it's bad writing and bad directing. And, well, you know, at least that one had fairly decent CG. The problem with, oh, I forgot to bring up Ant-Man and Qua uh, Quantumania. That one flopped. Yeah, so pretty much almost every Disney film that came out this year flopped. And a lot of that has been complete trash. I mean, their their portrayal of MODOK is horrible, because that's not how MODOK is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of um, movies that did not do very good this year. And when you look at how many things actually lost money versus made money... And Hollywood overall did really bad. Now, that doesn't include, like, the indie scene or um, overseas films. Um, you know, the Studio Ghibli film, uh, The Boy and the Heron. Um, that seems to be doing pretty decent. And Godzilla Minus One, of course, blew its budget right past and it's making bank. Um, but when it comes to a lot of the American-made stuff... It seems that a lot of people aren't as interested as they used to be. It either is because, you know, people trying to throw their modern politics into things, which, uh, unless your story directly involves politics, here's a little pro tip. Don't put politics into things. doesn't matter what side you're trying to put in. 
Nobody wants that. And if you think that you're making something for a modern audience, right there is your biggest problem. You should be making things for the audience, not a modern audience. Because guess what? The modern audience doesn't exist. And if you look at these box offices, the you know totals and everything, it should show that first and foremost. This so-called myth of the modern audience with oh, there's sensibility. <laughs> no. No. People want to see movies. They want to have heroes. They like the um, hero with a thousand faces, you know. Uh, they want their men to be manly, their women to be womanly. Um, and they don't want to have politics just thrown in regardless of what kind. Um, that's part of the reason why um, Lady Ballers isn't as big of a film because it is a very political film, but it's political on the right side rather than the left side. Um, so ultimately, what Hollywood should learn is just to work on making movies entertaining for as many people as possible. And that means to make things apolitical. Your story, if it doesn't involve, like if it really doesn't involve politics at all, Step away from that. Don't put that in there at all. Because if you put that in there, that's going to actually damage your film. And, of course, Disney is starting to see that firsthand. Um, considering that they had... I, I don't even know if they had a movie this year that actually was profitable. Other than Guardians of the Galaxy. And that was barely profitable. I think it may have... I think it needed like seven hundred million, and it made eight hundred million. So that is barely profitable at all, and it doesn't cover the amount they've lost from everything else they put out this year. Um, just one bomb after another, and I'm I'm trying to remember the order of things. Maybe Thor: Love and Thunder was last year, or it was early this year. But either way, that film bombed. Um, and uh, for one thing, one of the reasons why the Marvel films aren't doing so hot is they aren't respecting certain characters, which is a very big problem. I mean, Thor has had very little respect given to him from Taika Waititi. Some people thought that Ragnarok was pretty good, and I enjoyed Ragnarok, but there were certain parts of it that I was not a big fan of. And then he took his... Taika Waititi-isms and cranked it to 11 and that's why Love and Thunder was terrible um, and it's a shame because I've seen his early work and I really like Taika Waititi's early work but his later work was trash so anyways if, my, if I can give a couple tips to Hollywood it's get better writers get directors who know what they're doing and respect the fans, because they're the ones who actually give you the money. If you don't respect your fans, um, you know, they, then you're not going to be making money. And look what's happened. You're not making any money.